So uh, good afternoon to everyone and uh, welcome to this session uh, for the Bachelor of Psychological Science program offered by the University of Wollongong. Uh, my name is Celine. I'm the uh, program manager for this program. And uh, this afternoon, I'm very happy to have with us the head of school, uh, Professor Peter Caputi, who would be uh, giving us an overview of the university as well as the program. And uh, together with me, I also have my team member, Bernard, and uh, we'll all take your questions perhaps after the session. And uh, we also have an alumni who would be doing a sharing as well after Peter's and my presentation. So uh, without further ado, let me uh, invite uh, Peter to start it off. Thank you. Thanks very much, Celine. And I'm delighted to be able to um, be with you and do this presentation, of course. Um, my, my, my real dream would be to actually be in Singapore and, and see everyone face to face. Um, so as Celine said, my name is Peter Caputi and I am the head of school uh, of the School of Psychology. And the School of Psychology is located was, um, within the Faculty of Arts, Social Science, Sciences and Humanities here at the University of Wollongong. In today's presentation, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the University of Wollongong, and then we're going to move through um, some slides where I'll be talking about the actual degree, the Bachelor of Psychological Science, some graduate outcomes, and some key information from uh, SIM. And I might, at that point, I might hand over to to Celine, and also talk a little bit about the student experience, what you might be able to expect at your time at SIM. So the University of Wollongong is located on the east coast of Australia, and I'm sure all of you know or have heard of Sydney. So Wollongong is located about 80 kilometres south of Sydney, and it's on the coast. So um, Wollongong is actually uh, uh, located on the beach, and um, quite a beautiful beaches we have in the area. A little bit about the university itself. Um, we have uh, a large number of students. Collectively, we have well over 35,000 students. And indeed, across our campuses, um, and, and, and indeed, in, in fact, prior to, prior to COVID, we would have had 15,000 students, uh, international students. And so our alumni is also quite large, um, well over 160,000. And you can see from those statistics that we have um, uh, quite a number of degree programs that we offer, of which the Bachelor of Psychological Sciences is one. And we also uh, are located, um, we also have an international footprint. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in, a, in a minute. So there's some, in a snapshot, some of the, uh, some statistics about, about the University of Wollongong. We're quite proud to have um, been able to do, um, uh, achieve a number of um, goals, I think, over, over the, the um, last few years. So for example, we've been ranked uh, among the world's top 1% of universities. Um, we've, we've also got good metrics when it comes to graduate employer satisfaction of our students. And across the world, we've been ranked the 14th best modern university in the world. So we're an internationally recognized university and have, um, have, uh, and be, have been able to achieve some wonderful achievements um, over the last few years. I mentioned before that we, we have an international footprint and um, you can see there on that map that clearly we have a footprint in Australia, but we also have footprints across, um, across Asia and uh, a, um, a campus in Dubai as well. So we've got partnerships in China and we've got campuses in Hong Kong and Malaysia and Dubai, as I mentioned. And then of course, we have um, quite a, a well-established partnership 
with the Singapore Institute of Management. Um, and I think if I, my mathematics is correct, Celine, it's um, probably we're about eight or nine years that we've had um, quite a, a strong, productive relationship with SIM. Yep. So some of you might say, well, what is psychology? Well, um, psychology encompasses quite a lot of things. The word itself, um, word psyche, means the study of the mind, in fact, the study of the soul. Um, and some of you, when you think of psychology, might simply think about um, um, uh, clinical psychology or counselling psychology. But the, the discipline of psychology is quite broad and covers a number of things, not just um, the clinical side of, of the discipline. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But you can see from this um, word chart here that there are words that you can probably uh, would be familiar with associating with psychology, but then there might be some other um, words in there that you might not have imagined before, such as neuroimaging um and other words in there so psychology is while it's a unified discipline is actually quite broad and therefore the application of psychology is also quite broad so what is psychology first of all psychology has a scientific base it's the study of the human mind and its function and how they influence the way we behave the profession of psychology, for example, working as a clinical psychologist or an organisational psychologist, is the application of, the, of psychological knowledge, uh, uh, of what we know about the, that discipline, to trying to deal with practical problems. So psychologists help us to understand who we are, how we think, how we behave, and not only that, but how we might change. So um, in, in terms of clinical psychology, the point around helping people function better and, and to prevent ill health, that would sit quite nicely. Um, my own research deals with a, a, a concept known as presenteeism. And that is when you still go to work when you're not well. And there, in, 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 in our research, we try and understand presenteeism so that we can also help people function better in the workplace. And of course, psychologists just don't deal with adults or, you know, we cover a, a wider array. So we deal with children, working with children, adults, we deal with families, couples, and as I and some of the work that I do looking at, at the application of psychological principles to solving problems in organisations. And some of you are familiar with people who work as organisational psychologists. So when we look at psychology and particularly the psychology that happens in um, our school, we have a group of um, staff who deal, who are best described as professional psychologists. Um, in our school, we, we have people who deal with clinical psychology predominantly. We have a couple of neuropsychologists and we have some people who are interested in organisational psychology. So there, we can look at the application and, and of those principles to practical, solution, practical problems. But we also have a group of people who are what, what you might refer to that do basic science or psychological research. And here, there is a, a systematic exploration of human behavior, okay? So what we ask questions like, what are factors that reduce speech anxiety in students? How are some people prejudiced? What areas of the brain are associated with recognizing faces? Is personality linked to intelligence? These are questions that we can tackle from a scientific um, perspective and 
um, adopt a systematic uh, strategy in exploring those particular behaviours and that particular those particular phenomena. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the course that we offer at uh, SIM. So we offer what's called the Bachelor of Psychological Science. This is an accredited degree, um, accredited um, by the Australian um psychology accreditation council so um some people might be interested in that so if you look at the basic core structure of the degree it's a three-year degree and um in the first year it's very much an introduction to topics in psychology you get um you get to um look at the the discipline in its broadest sense as we move from second year to third year, we start to focus more and more and deal with topics in greater depth. So in second year, there's detail. It's, it builds on what you've learned in first year and looks at contemporary issues when in the application of psychology. In third year, you go into even greater depth, uh, looking at, at, at individual um, content areas in quite a bit of detail. So there's a scaffolding, there's a building of knowledge, a building of understanding as you move from first year through to third year. Um, if we look at the first year in, in, in um, more detail, you'll see there that there are uh, four subjects on the left-hand side of the slide that are core subjects. Foundations of psychology A and B, so they're the kinds of um, two subjects that cover the breadth of psychology. There is a, a third subject that deals with research methods and statistics. And then um, there's a fourth, a fourth subject that's core that is really about critical thinking. Um, it, it's a really wonderful subject to kind of get you to start thinking about and understanding um, not only the study of psychology but more broadly your place in a university like um sim uh, to fill out the uh what you would do in first year there are four subjects that cover communication and media studies a study that is around science and technology the scientific revolution a writing subject and then a final subject which is around um, is a, a subject, a first year subject in philosophy. And you might say, well, why philosophy? If you look at the history of psychology, psychology actually came out of the discipline of, of philosophy. Um, if you wanted to study psychology way back at the start of last century, you did so in a, in a, a, a school or faculty of philosophy. And so that's why there's a strong relationship between psychology and philosophy. And as we progress um, through, you can see that we start to, in second year, start to look at um, disciplines, sub-disciplines of psychology in a lot more detail. In second year, you'll do subjects that deal with personality, the biological bases of psychology, right through to understanding um, uh, the psychology of abnormal behavior, more statistics. Some of you that have an interest in, in um, health psychology and sports psychology, there's a subject in second year called the psychology of physical activity and health. And finally, there is another subject uh, that is not core to the psychology, psychology um, component, called the psychology of exceptional children. In third year, um, again, you do um, solely psychology subjects. And you can see there, there's an array of subjects that cover, again, in more detail, some of the sub-disciplines um, that we have in, in psychology. You'll notice that I earlier mentioned the connection between philosophy and psychology. The subject there that you can see on the screen called history and meta theory of psychology 
is one that is meta-theoretical and deals with a number of philosophical issues in psychology as well. And there are also a couple of um, subjects that some students might be interested in, um, forensic psychology and child development as well. And of course, um, we also do advanced statistics um, in the third year of your course. So there's a, a, a more detailed descriptions of what happens, the subjects that you cover in first, second and third year. Um, the program that we offer is a full-time program. In years one and two, um, the subjects are quality assured by the UOW staff, but you have excellent, um, highly qualified local academics, local teachers at SIM um, uh, to deal with the content in year one to year two. Now, pre-COVID, what we did was we came over uh, and did intensive lectures, usually over two blocks that go for four week, four days and then three days. But given COVID, um, we've been doing uh, delivering the lecture content online. Um, and uh, the tutorials, though, I believe, are still offered face to face. My hope is that um in the very very near future we might go back to the model where we actually have intensive lectures um uh, we're currently receiving the vaccines in in australia i'm i'm not sure what the situation is in in singapore but i'm pretty sure that you're also um preparing if not have already started uh, to do so nonetheless there is this uh, wonderful um, uh, synergy between academics at Wollongong and local academics at SIM. Um, and as I said, the program's been going for well over eight or nine years. And, and in that time, we've um, had some wonderful local academics and we've managed to hang on to those really lovely and highly qualified um, teachers. So what are the outcomes? What, do we, what would we like our graduates to come out being able to do? Now, some of these skills you'll see aren't necessarily specific skills that you uh, would associate with psychology. They're actually, some of them are quite generic skills. So building your skill set around writing reports being able to become good data analysts. Importantly, being able to think critically and evaluate um, data information. A degree in psychology, uh, and you can see, even if you look at first year, there's quite a, uh, a diverse array of subjects. So one of the things that you develop is an understanding of various perspectives, alternatives, different ways of looking at a particular problem. And you'll also develop the capacity to do some higher order analysis, deal with an, um, huge amounts of information issues, synthesize those, um, come up with um, a really good analysis of issues um, that you might be interested in looking at. Okay, so I did mention previously that um, our degree is an accredited degree with uh, APAC, the Australian Psychological Accreditation Council. Um, and so with this, the important thing is, is actually the last point there. You are eligible to become a student member of the Australian Psychological Society and so on. But importantly, you're eligible, having completed this degree, you're eligible to um, apply for, provided your grades um, uh, uh, well, uh, are good enough to complete a fourth year course in psychology, an honours year. Um, and not only in Australia, but I, I believe that some of our students also go on to complete honours years in Singapore as well. So 
There is this advantage that this degree is accredited. The standards that the accrediting body um, uh, stipulates, we need to meet. And if they're not met, then the degree uh, loses its accreditation. So there's some, uh, the fact that it's professionally accredit accredited should give people some confidence about the standards and the quality of the program. So we've had a number of students who have decided that they would like to come and study psychology uh, a fourth year at um, UAW. And you can see here, I don't know if I can, you can see my pointer. This is actually Mount Kira. Uh, we have a, an array of activities um, that students can get in, can, can be part of. Clearly, um, coming to studying in lectures and going to the library are really important. But we also have the opportunity to get involved with university life at on campus. And we've had some excellent students come across and do exceptionally well in our honours year and then come back to Singapore and, and um, proceed to have some really wonderful careers. And here are some photos of past students who have come to SIM to study um, an honours year. Um, and you can see there um, uh, some of our students that have come along uh, to, to study. Um, okay, so Celine, this might be, no, it's still me. Okay, here we go. So a little bit about what you might be able to do post this degree. Um, if you do an honours year, then you can go on to do uh, further study. You can go on to um, pick up some research positions and indeed, I know that some of our students um, have worked for, have been able to gain employment in the um, Ministry of Education, for example. But having completed an honours year allows you to go on to do um, research degrees, but also is the first step in becoming registered as a psychologist in, in Australia. And here's a flow diagram. Um, if you're thinking of career paths, so you can see here that you complete the Bachelor of Psychological Science, you move on to do an honours year, or you can then go off and do a career, uh, or you can move on to do clinical programs, a clinical program or a professional psychology program, or indeed a PhD or a professional doctorate. Um, so not only can you complete a master's degree in, in clinical psychology, you can also complete, oops, beg your pardon, complete a PhD in clinical psychology, which will eventually lead you to, sorry, practicing as a psychologist. So there's a, a kind of pathway of the kinds of things that you can do by starting why at the beginning here by completing a Bachelor of Psychological Science. Okay. So with a three-year degree, there are a number of, um, as I said, some of our graduates have worked in education. Some of our graduates have gone on to complete um, uh, specializations in social work and public health. So there are um, opportunities there to go on to complete um, a number of programs post your third year. In terms of the areas that you can start looking at, here's an array of areas where psychology, a degree in psychology, would allow you to work in, right? So um, clearly there is some there where you're directly working with people. So, um, you know, but there are others there where you're, you might um, be working in an organization like advertising. Your data and analytics skills and your ability to report um, is where you could work in an insurance industry, preparing reports and so on. So there's a, a kind of a, a smattering of, of some of the things that you can do with uh, having a background or a degree in psychology. 
So, Celine, I might hand over to you there if that's okay, and you can talk a little bit about about this. Okay. Right. Just thank tell me you. when you want me to move, and I'll press. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, for the next few slides, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about perhaps some admin details about the program itself. So the Bachelor of Psychological Science program uh, is offered as a full-time program here at SIM. And uh, by full-time, it means that most of the lessons are actually conducted in the daytime. So anytime between 8.30 to 6 p.m. on weekdays. And uh, as of now, I think we don't really have classes on Saturday. So it's really mainly Mondays to Fridays during the day. So this being a three-year program, we actually have uh, multiple um, entry paths into the program, depending on your prior qualification. So if you happen to be a diploma holder with a relevant diploma in psychology, for example, you may be eligible for up to 1.5 years worth of credit exemptions, which basically means that you only require 1.5 years to complete your program with us. Okay, for those of you who are holding A-level qualifications, uh, that usually means that you have to complete the full three years, which is similar to any inter, uh, international qualifications with year 12. That also means a full three years program. So for A-levels, maybe I could just uh, take some time to explain how we do the counting of scores. You need a minimum of 9.5 points to enter the program if you're actually holding A-level qualifications. And how we calculate uh, 9.5 is basically um, A grade is a 5, B grade is 4, and it goes down 3, 2, 1. Uh, you have to uh, select 3 of your best H2 plus 1 H1. And where the uh, H1 subject uh, has to be, sorry, the uh, H2 subject cannot be language-based or project-based. It has to be a content-based subject. And uh, so you take your best three subjects based on the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 scoring plus your best 1 H1. This one you have to got to divide the score by 2, add them together. If you actually meet 9.5, then you will actually be eligible to be admitted into the program itself. If you've got any other questions about how to calculate the points, maybe you could leave uh, me a question after that and I can get back to you then. Okay. Uh, Peter, if I can move on, yes. So this talks about the program fees for our program. So all our uh, fees are actually calculated per module. So uh, our term structure is typically six months in duration. So it goes like January to June and July to December. So a full three years program will comprise of six semesters. And a typical load for each semester is four modules. So if you were to take four multiplied by 1,605, that would be the amount that you will have to pay before the commencement of each semester. So I think that works out to be $6,000. over And uh, because we're actually billing you per module, so for whatever reason, if for a particular semester, you want to take half the load, so say uh, two modules, then you will only be required to pay for those two modules. So everything is actually based on whatever modules that you're being enrolled for. So the total cost fees for the program is actually $42,800. Yeah. So uh, something uh, more about uh, student life at SIM. So uh, Peter covered in his slides about how life is like, how university life is like over at UOW. So at SIM, we also aim to give our students, besides a good academic experience in the classrooms, we actually want to provide a comprehensive range of support activities to build the leadership qualities and other qualities that will be important to students when you actually go outside to work. So over at SIM, we have a, a student care center that offers counselling services, especially for students who are just adapting to life at a university. Some of them would go through uh, you know, a period where you want to have some kind of support. Our counsellors are actually there to provide that kind of support for you. So in addition, we also have uh, things like leadership training camps, uh, study abroad programs, as well as various workshops and seminars, as well as student clubs and groups where you can actually build your interests and hone your skills uh, as well. Uh, this is just some of the uh, current infrastructure that SIM has. Uh, in fact, uh, this year, we are actually having a hybrid open house where uh, it's a mixture of both online program briefings as well as on-site 
uh, program consultations. So for all of you uh, who have an opportunity to be there at SIM, I would like to encourage you to be there to take a campus tour and have a look at our infrastructure and the place that you will be spending your time if you should choose to commence your studies with us. Uh, project 1095, that is something that uh, our colleagues at the Student Life have innovatively designed. So why the number 1095? So this is actually the number of days that you would spend in SIM if you're actually completing a three years program. So it's like 24 hours a day, over 365 days a year, which makes 1095 days in three years. And how through the different pillars at the bottom, we envision that we can enrich and make you better individuals at the end of your program with us. Um, so these are just some of the possible student life activities that uh, we organize if you happen to join us. So for the uh, budding entrepreneurs, there are possibilities for you to do engage in push card businesses to test your ideas. We organize regular job fairs at SIM where we're bringing different employers uh, to meet up with our students, to give them the right kind of employment opportunities. In addition, we also make it a point to organize different um, soft skill workshops to enrich you with the skills that is required. And uh, we're also very proud of some of our student clubs, especially things like Dragon Boat, where we have actually done very well in the inter-varsity games as well. Okay. Yes, and uh, on student exchange, um, so SIM and UOW has actually got a student exchange program. So uh, we realized that student exchange is very important to students now, as uh, a lot of you actually look forward to opportunities to be able to go to the UOW main campus and spend a period of up to six months where you can actually experience both cultural and how the learning environment differs from uh, Singapore. So, uh, you know, being part of this student exchange program could also mean opportunities to uh, go to other campuses uh, that Peter had pointed out in his earlier slides. So as you know, so UOW has got campuses in Dubai, uh, Malaysia. So these are also opportunities or in Hong Kong. So these are some of the opportunities that could be available to students as well. And uh, if, uh, yeah, and uh, these are just some of the contact details uh, that you can follow up with. Um, us after this uh, session. So uh, maybe what I'll do now, Peter, is to uh, probably hand this session over to Joey. Sure. So uh, usually for our briefing sessions, we would either invite a current student or an alumni to actually come back to share a little bit about their experience with us when they are with us as a student and what they are currently doing to give you a bit of insight into the possibilities of what you can do after you complete the program with us. Hi, Joey. So Joey happened to also attend the uh, student exchange program. I think that was when I met Joey. And uh, I, I believe that she'll be sharing with you some of the highlights of her journey with us as a SIM uh, UOW student. Yeah. Over to you, Joey. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi, Dr. Peter. Hi, Celine. Hello. <laughs> Let me share my screen. Okay. Oh, um, the host is able to attend. Oh, uh, sorry, that's uh, me. Let me... Uh... <laughs> Okay, let me quickly uh, put you back in. Uh... Okay, can you try again, Joey? Yes, we can see your slides, yeah. Okay. okay, so now I'm just going to talk about my personal account in SIM. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Joey. I graduated from Bachelor of Psychological Science last year. And yeah, and then I went on to do my honours degree and yeah, I'm working right now. Um, so why did I choose SIM UW? Because previously I was from Early Childhood Studies in Thermasic Body. And yeah, I think maybe some of you might have felt this way, but because I also wasn't competent to enter FASS local universities. But I would like to say is don't be discouraged because SIM is a door to many opportunities. Um, why did I say that? Because I was actually really glad that I chose SIM. Um, the program was at a steady pace and we only took like three to four modules each semester. And this is actually very different from like other universities where my friends 
every single time they were complaining about having to clear modules, like having to take like six to seven modules per semester. Um, and then which also lead to lower burnt out rates. And most of the deadlines are actually spread out. So unlike poly, which we always have the hell week, but um, we really have time to work on our assignments from, the, from one to the next one. And my favorite module is personality, but sorry, Dr. Peter is not statistics. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I like personality because we get to learn about the different type of psychological disorders. Um, yeah, and so we have to, uh, we know about like, we learn about the causes, the criteria, the symptoms, like for example, the famous one is like OCD, schizophrenia, ADHD. Yeah, and we also give them like case studies to analyze and to, to analyze that what disorder that person might have. So um, at the end of every lecture, my lecturer will say like, oh, please don't start analyzing everyone. Uh, oh, I think I missed one point under that, like for expectation of program. So I feel like the people here are really very uh, warm-hearted. They, um, there was this really one tutor that, I remember it's like she actually gave us an outline that helped in the time management, which I thought it was really unique because a lot of my tutors in um in poly don't actually do that. They were very hands off. So this tutor actually gave us like, oh, for example, in two weeks' time, you are supposed to start reading your articles, and by the next week, you are supposed to start forming the draft. So that was when it really helped me, and I really realized like, oh, actually this tutor and lecturers, they actually really, really care about you and it's not like very hands off. Yeah, so, and of course the peers were very nice as well. And also seniors also give like a lot of insights to the module. And as for student life, um, the, co the cohort is very small. So everyone kind of like know each other. So peers were friendly, they helped out each other. And so we even passed like a lot of study notes around. And there was this one time where we had to write a lab report on a topic that was not very well researched on. So it is very common for us to actually find the same article and use it. And because of that, majority of us read the results wrongly and we actually wrote the wrong hypothesis and our lecturer was so mad. So we had to clean up our mess by providing a reason on the discussion part on why the hypothesis was different. It was a very hectic <laughs> day. Yeah, so this actually shows like how cohesive our cohort is. And we also have like group chats for each modules. Um, yeah, and we also have like announcements. So for those who don't normally keep track on their deadline, these chats were like really, very useful. Um, I joined the Catholic Society where we gather every Wednesday evening from friends from like other universities at SIM, like UB, UOL, um, RMIT. So we have fellowship, campus mass, we share our life, we gather together, we rent a lot of things together also. Um, so I recently, uh, not recently, I actually, I was also in Heart Mamas, which is a voluntary group in at Institute of Mental Health. So this is where I interacted with patients and I actually learned to observe and see what I can apply while I studied. And, I really liked my time there. It was really fun. Like, wow, I played mahjong with the patients. <laughs> yeah, it was really very entertaining. So uh, I feel like SIM really changed over a lot over the years. Like before I entered uni, my main concern was that, oh, universities will actually have more job opportunities. So actually, I think I could have gotten into NUS, but only for the English or linguistic courses. So I was thinking like, okay, maybe uh, I should just study what I can get into since they have like more job opportunities. But end up I'm just like, okay, so okay, I'll just try SIM because I really feel like if I really like something, I should pursue it. So that was why I entered here. And this concern is, I don't think it's a concern anymore because it really depends on the grades and the experience. Um, so like, because I feel like uh, we don't have a lot of modules. We only have three to four. So this gives us time to work part-time and to gain a lot of experience. And I feel like when I was applying for a job after graduation, a lot of employ employers actually see experience. Yeah, instead of 
um, which uni are from. Yeah, but I feel like times has changed a lot. So, uh, and the most memorable event was the overseas program. So, and I, oh yeah, and this also, I also want to say like previously during my second year, uh, year 2.1, they didn't have this exchange program, but after asking SIM, like the next moment they just give us, oh, we are going to have an exchange program next semester. Are you keen? So I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm joining. Yeah, so I feel like SIM also really listens to like the student feedback. <laughs> yeah, and this was really the most memorable event. Like, um, it definitely broadened my global perspective, and I really look at the world in like a totally different lens. So I met a lot of like local and international students. So even some of the Singaporeans who went there, they were like, um, UOW organized in Singapore. So they went over, they, they did their PhD and then they were my tutors. So it was very fun knowing them. And yeah, so I do study with the international students, but most of the time it ended up as a gathering session. But thankfully, like my accommodation had study sessions where if you go for 10 sessions and then they will reward you with pizza while studying. So yeah, great motivation. And not only I get to study the middle of the forest because Wollongong is like um, a very nice city where you can um, chill. Like it's not it's not like city life like Singapore like that. Yeah, and I did I also did a lot of traveling like a lot. So every weekend I'll just like travel out of Wollongong to explore other different parts of Australia. Yeah, and I travel with the international friends, not really local because. The, um, the locals were quite busy studying. Yeah, and yeah, so I feel like it's a whole part of different cultures, nationalities. So I also went to many events organized by the school, such as this one, the two days, one night at Pop Stevens and Hunter Valley. So I got to sun, sand, sand ski. Yeah, and we went to this like animal. Um, the zoo and then you see like three colas hugging, hugging each other, it was really cute. So the Wulong Kong actually has a uni bar and I really like it there. So this was during the October <laughs> Yeah, and I joined like a lot of like society, like Taiwanese society, Malaysian society because they don't have Singaporean society. So yeah, we went on, um, we went to Gold Coast, I think this is the so first paradise beach, yeah. Yeah, and then somehow or rather, I went to this like global communication program. So this was their BBQ day. I can't remember, I think I think it was like, yeah, I can't remember what event was it, but apparently they brought a farm over to the school. Yeah, so that, that piglet there belongs to me. And then I really like like the three animals like just like chilling on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, for the global communication program, I find it very interesting because personally I didn't go because I think I had too many things on hand, but my friend was telling me her experience that they talk about like the international students, they talk about topics like wearing wearing shoes to bed, like where you wear shoes to bed. So apparently some Western does that and all the Asian people just go like, ew, you you, you would do that. Yeah, I think. Thankfully, there wasn't like any dispute after that. So the highlight was like skydiving. Yeah, I went skydiving with like Taiwanese, with our Taiwanese friends. And the one who's wearing Tudong is actually um, my senior. She also studied in UW. The next one is, oh, the PIX program. A, this PIX program is called Psychology in an International Context. This is where our UOW friends will come over to Singapore. So I was quite excited for this because I really went there and then I read, I've met like some of the people who, some of the students who actually came, who ever, who actually came over to Singapore because I met them over in Australia. Yeah, so I was quite excited to meet them. So we went for like IMH tour, we went to the NUS Psychology Clinic where one of the professors actually talked to us about what they do. Um, so we also went for like, we also had like talks on research and clinical pathway to see what we really want in our career. We had a workshop on counseling skills and practice, which was quite fun. Yeah, and also a psychology research seminar. And of course, the farewell dinner it was very yummy. <laughs> and yeah, the biggest takeaway from 
from what I learned was is that just don't judge something just by looking at the surface that underneath it there's actually a vast goodness to discover. Thank you. Thank you, Joey, for your sharing. Um, perhaps now I'd like to open the floor to any questions by anyone. Uh, please feel free to uh, unmute yourself. I'm going to try and uh, let you do that. If not, you could always uh, type your questions into the window and uh, we can actually uh, answer it. Yeah. So you can address your questions to either Peter, myself or to Joey. Maybe if there's someone who would like to uh, raise the questions, could you just type it in the uh, chat box and I could then unmute you. Anyone? Uh, if not, maybe uh, what I can do is uh, perhaps ask some questions that we normally get from uh, previous uh, sessions. Yeah, so uh, Peter, I think one of the uh, common questions that we get is really about our fourth year honours program at uh, UOW. So uh, perhaps some people would like to understand, for example, uh, whether there's a criteria that they have to meet in order to go. I, I think there is definitely a minimum criteria yes. that you have to meet. And uh, basically, uh, maybe a little bit about the fees or what are the kind of options that are available to them uh, when they're actually doing their fourth year honours. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, honours uh, includes... Honours is a really um, special year because you get to work with one of the academics one-on-one -on -one, um, to do a, a major research project. You do a, a small thesis. You do coursework as well um, as part of your um, training, but you spend pretty much your year, um, at least from about February through to October, working with a supervisor on a research project that, um, that you'd like to, to work on. Um, entry into honours is competitive and usually we, um, it, it, it usually um, the kind of marks that you need are sit between um, around about, um, across the psychology subjects, by the way, sit, um, around about 72 to 75 as your average. So a good, what we would call a good credit distinction um, a range. Um, uh, we do offer subsidized fees. Now off the top of my head, I can't remember the actual uh, costings, but we do offer subsidized fees. I think if you're planning to come to, once we can travel again, come to, to Australia, um, and you can see that Joey's experiences uh, in Australia, I think, I think one point that I found that was really interesting, like Singapore, in some ways, um, at least Wollongong, is quite multicultural. And, and so uh, you can get to experience that, that aspect of Australian life um, as well, which is, you know, obviously very different to what it is in Singapore, but it is multicultural. So that experience of coming to another country um, is also um, quite a good, good, good experience. Um, and you can see that there's opportunities to explore. You'd be, if you have a look at the background to Celine, there's some beautiful beaches there in Wollongong um, as well. But I, I think the... Uh, I, I think the uh, we take in this year um, we have taken in almost seventy students, and um, the students that complete the degree in Singapore 
are not discriminated at all when it comes to the cohort for selection. So everyone is on the same level playing field there um, as well. So, you know, I think if you are thinking of doing an honours year and when we can travel, which I believe isn't going to be too far away, you may want to consider um, a, uh, a travelling to Australia to do an honours year uh, as well. Okay, thanks, Peter. I'm just having a uh, check on the chat just to see whether anyone has raised any other questions. Um, okay, if not, then maybe just to build on a little bit about what Joey mentioned just now about statistics. So I think, again, one of the common questions that sometimes we see uh, prospects asking would be that they uh, notice that uh, statistics is something that we cover uh, as part of our program and uh, whether, you know, if they don't have a very good background in statistics, whether that would be a problem if they actually come into the program? No, not at all. I think we start from the very basics. Um, and we don't train you to be a statistician. We train you to be a good data analyst. And I think that that's, that's the important distinction there. But as you can see from Joey's face, how, how much she enjoyed personality, but she also... <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed uh, statistics, particularly the, the third year mod module that I teach. So <laughs> it's because you're a funny lecturer, I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. Um, I think the other thing to keep in mind is that um, a degree in psychology doesn't stop you from pursuing other degrees. So one of the graduates from the very first honours cohort that we had um, ended up going to do uh, medicine at Duke, was it, um, Celine? Yes, so, uh, Adriel. Adriel, yeah. yeah. So yeah. he did extremely well in, 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 in a degree in psychology, but then took that experience and went into medicine. So, you know, it, it, there are many other, many, many things that you can, can do with, with, with that degree. Um, and as I said, some of my students, past students, have gone on to work in in, uh, in the uh, Ministry of Education and, uh, and and other places. Some of them have actually uh, worked uh, as research assistants at places like NUS as well. So um, the quality of the graduate um, is recognised by you know great institutions like NUS, you know your national university. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, doing yet another check on the chat. <laughs> um, does anyone have any other questions that you would like to uh, raise at this moment? So, Celine, um, yep. I think I think you gave some information there about contact details. I think. If people have got questions afterwards, they can obviously contact you. Yes, uh, correct. And uh, we also... And what I'll do, I'll put yep. my email address in the chat. And by all means, you can email me at that address. And um, I can also answer questions. And if I don't know the answer to those questions, I'll ask Celine. Because she has the answers to all the questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think if uh, that's the case, I will probably uh, bring this session to a close then. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking time to attend the session. And uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Joey, for joining us uh, in this session itself. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we definitely hope to be able to see you in our program. Yeah.